Hello, Herman here with a new video in the ClearPass workshop series where we build the ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired, Wireless, Active Directory and much more. In the previous video, we enabled OnGuard, so we have the agent, we also have the caching, so here we have the posture post from the OnGuard agent, so we can see that we are infected for this client. And we can have through the cached roles and posture, we can see also the infected in the .1x. In this video, we'll start responding to that infected status and give a different role for infected clients versus healthy clients. But before we do that, I found another thing and I didn't cover that yet and maybe a few things. So uh, first of all, here under the OnGuard settings, uh, there are a lot of settings also here under the global agent settings. We covered the previous screen, but we didn't uh, cover this one. And one of these, because we do posture without authentication, here you can see use the active username in health only mode. And this will show the username instead of the MAC address in the access tracker. So I think this is nice to enable. Then secondly, if we go to the software updates, let's first save. When we go to the software updates, we can see that we have updates for the posture signature updates and the Windows hotfixes. By default, ClearPass will not do any updates for these signatures. And when you deploy OnGuard, of course, it's good to have actual signatures and you can easily enable it. Uh, to do so, you will go to the server manager, then to the server configuration. And here under the cluster wide parameters, we have here the automatic download. So normally it will automatically download the software updates, but it will not do the same for the Windows hotfixes and the fingerprint updates. I think it's a good idea to enable that, especially when we are deploying on guard and we're doing fingerprinting as well. Now let's have a look here. And we see immediately the updates were done. This one not yet. Check status now but it will update at some point, probably. So that's all good. So oh, there it is. We are all on the latest. So good to have that updated as well, in addition to the software updates. Okay, next what we need to do is we need to create a policy. And of course, if we have a healthy client, we want to provide the normal policy that we have. So for the employees, that will be the employee policy. Then probably if we have an infected client, what would be good to have a limited policy so they can just access the remediation servers, so the servers that are needed to get out of it. And typically that includes your domain controllers. As well, it might be good to have a redirect. There was one command in the previous video. So how can we do a redirect? So it's a good idea to create a redirect as well. And you can create a redirect to any page there is, but also on the ClearPass, there is a number of built-in pages and we can leverage them. And these are here under the configuration, then the web pages. So here we have a whole list of pages. Let's take the posture check and then it will show this nice page. And also here you can edit it. So you can completely make it your own. You can do different skins. You can change the text. You can use ClearPass to show this page and to explain to the end users what they should do when they see this text. Good, so what do we need to do in order for the clients to show that? I already prepared a few roles here. So these are the roles for the wired for the wireless they are similar for the wired i created a class remediation so this is my domain controller this is my internet server we can have access even if you're in quarantine you have access to these servers if you don't have access to the ad servers you can't log in and you can't remediate and it's good that users can do remediation and can update their antivirus and so on Otherwise, they will never get compliant again. By the way, I missed here the update servers for the antivirus. You get the ID, hopefully. Then I create a new policy, which is uh, pretty much the same as the uh, one that I have for guests. So if we scroll up, you can see this is pretty much the same. It's just that here at position 40, I added the remediation class so we can have access to the ClearPass server, which is needed for the posture updates. We need DHCP, DNS, then we have access to the remediation server. And again, uh, include all the servers that are needed for remediation and recovery of the client. And then we do a rep redirect to a captive portal. 
Then for the captive portal, we can create a new definition. So here I have my guaranteed blocked. That's a different one than this one. It's this one. But let's uh, take this. So this is similar guaranteed to your client. Uh, and you can change this as well. And then we create a role where similar to the guests, you have a captive portal, but now we link to the ClearPass Quarantine captive portal profile. Instead of the captive portal policy, we link to the quarantine policy defined here. And we can do the same for the contractors. And why do I do this at this point? That is because if you want to change roles, if you want to go in quarantine and from quarantine, you should avoid VLAN changes. So if we know who are the contractors and who are the employees, then we just based on the posture status, we want to have them quarantined or not, but we want to keep them in the same VLAN. Otherwise you need to do port bounces on the wired and you really don't want to do that. So uh, please keep the VLAN the same. And by having these different roles, so employee quarantine, contractor quarantine, in addition to the contractor and the employee role, this will help us to switch the policy and keep the VLAN the same. So let's copy this. Let's put that in the switch. Let's check. I think that all went well. Yeah, looks good. So now what we need to do is to create these roles. So let's switch back to our policy manager. We need to go to the configuration. Enforcement profiles, and let's duplicate this one. Employee quarantine, and let's change the name for that as well. Good, and do the same for the contractor. Good, so contractor quarantine returns the contractor quarantine role, employee quarantine returns the employee quarantine role. Okay, good. Let's tie that into the policy. So we are on the wired. So let's check our wired .1x enforcement because that's where the magic happens. So here we can create roles or let's copy the employee, edit this rule. And here we do the tips posture. If that equals healthy, then we return the same. And otherwise, we return the employee quarantine. Good. Same for the contractor. Copy, edit, tips, posture, equals healthy. Then we still return the contractor role. But otherwise, we return the contractor quarantine. Let's remove this one. Save, save. Go. So now this has changed. Let's have a look in the access tracker. Okay, let's get to my client. I had the posture of infected. That's because I have my notepad running. Let's close the notepad. And also last time I pressed on the retry. So just let's have a look how long it will take. I think it should take maximum 30 seconds. So there we go. So this was roughly 20 seconds or so. And now we see that we have the healthy status and we are re-authenticating. So let's have a look. There we go. And let's see the enforcement profiles. So here we have the employee role, which is expected. And here you can see as well the change settings. So now we see the username instead of the MAC address that we saw before. That was that agent setting that we changed. Let's start the notepad again. And let's wait. And there we go. And we see that the status has changed. Health status is quarantined. The role is employee quarantine. And now let's have a look if we go somewhere. We can indeed see that we are redirected. So we were authenticated before. So that's why you don't have the automatic pop-up or uh, now you can see that we have this message. So it can take uh, some time 
this is basically how you can start building your policies. And uh, I still have access now to my uh, domain controller and I think to my intranet as well. That's allowed. And that's because that policy that has the uh, remediation settings and it is blocking. So we can't get to the internet. So we will be redirected. So that's also an indication for the end users that there's something happening and they should do something. And what they should do, you can put that in the messages that you're showing. And again, I now show the message on the ClearPass guest server. So there are a lot of default ones as shown, but you can point them to your help desk system or to your internet server or to your knowledge base or uh, whatever where you have the instructions for users, how they can get out of guarantee. We did it now on the wired. It's pretty trivial. You can do the same on the wireless. There you link to a captive portal profile. Actually, it is the same. It's just a different type of configuration. So that's all nice. And then, then you can do the on guard both on the wired and on the wireless. Hope this was useful. So what we did, we enabled in the beginning of the video, the automatic updates for our posture and for our fingerprints. We didn't do that before. And by default, these are off. And when we are deploying on guard, it's good to have that enabled. Then we created some additional roles on the switch for the quarantine of the employee and for the quarantine of the contractor. And as mentioned, uh, try to avoid changing VLANs. If you're using the disconnect user instead of the port bounds, at that point, make sure that you will not switch VLANs. Otherwise, the client will not know that there is a new VLAN uh, and it will just stay through the DHCP in the old VLAN and it will become a big mess. So stay on the VLAN, both for guests and for this on guard. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.